Let's check out another mini PC, and this one is from the Geekom XT series. This is the XT12 featuring an Intel i9-12900H. Now, right off the bat, let's cover a few different things about these i9s. They're extremely low power, they're very fast, and they're about as good as it gets when it comes to single core performance. We're going to have a total of 14 cores and a total of 20 threads. This also has the Intel XE graphics, and that's reserved for the faster graphics, I guess. So we have six performance cores, and we have eight efficiency cores. And the performance cores are all hyper-threaded, so... 12 threads there, 8 threads with the efficiency cores. And all in all, this means that you're going to get a lot of performance. You'll be able to do a lot of stuff at the same time as well because we do have 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's DDR4 memory, which isn't, I guess, a little interesting because we're all doing DDR5 now. But this, the speed's pretty similar, and that'll keep the price a little bit lower. So what you're sacrificing in speed there, you'll get back a little bit when it comes to the price. There's a lot of different mini PCs on the market. I'm going to tell you what this one is really good for. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View Keys and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Act Activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Something else that separates this one from a lot of the other ones is the build quality. This, look at that it's beautiful metal frame. This feels substantial in your hands. It doesn't feel flimsy on the, on the sides, the vents and the fans and everything. So this one is built with extra care. Got their Ice Flow 1.0 cooling system and that pulls in air from one side, blows it down on all the core components there. Then it goes out the sides. When it comes to the fan, yeah, you can hear the fans. It's a little louder than some that I've tested, but it's quieter than most, and we'll cover that in just a little bit. The memory they have here, they report 3200 megahertz, and in the computer in some of the tests I was doing, it reported back 2600 mega transfers. The size, 117 by 111 by 38.5 millimeters. So this is also smaller than most. They are pushing a lot of power through this, up to 35 watts. Let's cover all the ports, and then we'll go through the benchmarks. And on the front there, you see we have two USB Type-A. Those are USB Gen 3.2, and then we have our combo headphone and microphone port, and and then on the back, we have two USB 4, and those are USB 4 Gen 3, which is awesome. And those also support power delivery. Below that, you'll see HDMI. This supports four monitors at the same time. It'll also support 8K monitors. And then we have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, as well as two more USB. One is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 as well, and then the other one is just USB 2. So the USB 4 will support 8K displays. And then the HDMI is HDMI 2.0, which will support 4K at 60 hertz. We have Wi-Fi 6E. We also have Bluetooth 5.2. Well, the USB 4 is also Thunderbolt 4, and that supports 40 gigabits per second of data transfer throughput. Yes. What a sentence. One other thing that's cool about having the Thunderbolt on the back is you can plug this up to a GPU dock. Almost forgot to mention for the CPU. CPU also has 24 megabytes of the Intel Smart Cache. Max frequency is 5 gigahertz, and um, the efficiency core's max frequency is 3.8 gigahertz. It does come with Windows 11 Pro. So thanks very much for giving us a copy of Pro instead of making us upgrade from home to Pro. On the side, we do have a Kensington lock as well, but we don't have any memory card slots on this unit. Let's jump in and take a look at some of these benchmarks. Getting under the hood and doing a few upgrades is really easy. All you have to do is flip it over, take off the four screws on the bottom, and then just remove the, the housing. You have to remove the entire metal. It's the sides as well, like the fan grills on the side. Everything comes off. And then we have easy access to the inside, and you can see there's those two DDR4 SO dims. They're both just hanging out in there. The first M.2 slot, you can put a two terabyte in there, but it comes with a one terabyte. And then the second one there, it's a 2242 slot. It's like a half size slot, and that'll take up to a one terabyte M.2. Now let's take a look at Valley. Yes, we're totally running Windows 8. I think it's getting some information incorrect right there, but it knows the CPU. It knows it well. I didn't expect it to do this well. This Intel is doing a pretty good job right here on 1920 by 1080 high settings. So there you can see the score. If you're playing along at home, you can see what score you get. You know, we didn't hit a 30 FPS average, but this test I did not expect to even get 20 FPS, so performing better than I expected all the way around. And you can play along at home if you want to compare your 
results. This is 2749, and you can see 1080p medium here with DirectX. So here we are, Far Cry 5 running on the normal setting, which is kind of like a medium setting at 1080p. I do have motion blur turned off. Otherwise, it's exactly the normal setting for everything. And you can see our average FPS is 26. This is a little behind the similarly priced Ryzen's when it comes to gaming in this category. So let's go ahead and drop it down and see if it's playable on the low setting, because I wouldn't really want to play it like this. And here on the low setting, it's a little more playable. We don't have any major spikes going down, as you can see. Now, the new Intel Ultra had some major spikes going down. This one's a little more even with the FPS all the way through, but our minimum FPS was 26, so this is not going to be something I'd want to play um, on this system unless we pranked it down to 720p. But for me, these Intels are not like 3D gaming powerhouses. You can see the RAM right here. Just note that this is a lie. It's got 128 gigabytes of integrated memory, but it also borrows from the system memory. And this one has DDR4, so not quite as fast as DDR5, but it does have a larger pool of memory to draw from. All right, let's see what Mario Kart can do. We're running it at 1x. We do have bilinear filter turned on, but no anti-aliasing or anything like that. Oh, maybe I should push the right button so I go forward. So it actually feels really good getting close to 60 FPS pretty much all the time. It looks really good in my opinion. So yeah, you can totally play Mario Kart 8 on this machine. Every now and then you'll see a little bit of a stutter. That's because while we're playing this, it's also building shader cache at the same time. Okay, the Intel XE works just fine. Let me show you the settings I had to use in case you want to try this yourself. I put it on Vulkan, and then down here I had to put the emulation on CPU video decoding. When I put it on GPU video decoding, it didn't work. All right, it's having a little bit of trouble with Zelda, mostly because the shaders are building. Let's let them build up for just a second. Okay, check it out. I ran around for a minute, and now we're in the 30s. Hovering around 30, whenever the shaders start building again, it goes back down. So, yeah, it's almost playable. Let's go ahead and try it in docked mode. There we go. Now we're in docked mode. And you can see now we're in the 40s. So, yeah, if you want to play this in docked mode, if you can deal with the few stutters here and there in the beginning <laughs> and make it difficult to control, well then, go ahead. Maybe a rock is the wrong thing to use. Let's take a look at Cinebench. Now, here's our multi-core score, and you can see how it stacks up. These are the really huge thread rippers and the big Xeons and all that. And then down here, you can see exactly where it is, just a little ahead of the 7700K. That's the multi-core score. Take a look at this. Switch over to the single core, and, and look at that. That's ridiculous. So a lot of the times when you're using this, you're going to feel like it's extremely quick, and that's because it's not using a lot of cores for whatever task. And a lot of the other cores that are here are going to be used for background tasks. Desktop computing, the single core score is quite important. And the single core score is going to be indicative of those first few performance cores. And then if we take a look back over at the multi-core score, yeah, it'll be a little bit slower when it comes to doing multi-core things like rendering, 3D work, etc. But for regular desktop use and also a lot of games, this is very important. So here's our Geekbench single core and multi-core score. You can see 2306 and 9519. You can compare that against your own stuff if you like. And then I'll scroll down so you can see all of the individual tests. And that way you can just decide, you know, based upon whatever test is most important for however you're going to be using this computer. So there's all those. Now let's take a look at our OpenCL score, 15579. And scrolling down again, we can look at the individual test scores right there. You know, next up, I wanted to test out the hard drive. So I have a couple different tests here. First off, I ran CrystalMark, and that just tests the hard drive, plus a whole bunch of other things. Now, this is the CrystalMark Retro. This is not Crystal Disk Mark. This is Crystal Mark, which I don't run that often. But I wanted to take a look and just see what we came up with here with our 2D scenes and our 3D scenes. It gives you a really good picture of what's going on. And if you test against some of your own stuff, you'll be able to see exactly how it's going to perform depending on the situation. And then this weeb stuff over here. So this over here, this is how fast our hard drive is. So we got 4,062 maximum on the read. And on the right over here, the maximum is 3,211. I accidentally clicked on this like an idiot. This is all I really wanted to see with a random 4K I op. Maxed out at 179.96 on the read and 143.084 on the right. All right, I want to see how warm this gets and I want to see how loud it is. So let's go ahead and run A to 64. Open that up really quick, and then we're going to click on the fire icon up here. I'm going to let this run for 15 minutes just to see how hot it gets, and I'll stop somewhere in the middle and test for noise. Right in the beginning, if you can see like right here, it jumped up to 87, and then the fans ramped up, and they got a little bit loud, and then they just kind of stabilized at sort of a medium volume. So I'm going to do a quick room tone right now. So we'll call it around 43. Except for when I'm talking, of course. All right, so the fans kind of wore up and down. 
and it was getting, it got a little louder than this, but I, I pressed the hold button right here, but I think the loudest I saw was 47.8. So yeah, the fans do ramp up a little bit. It goes a little bit. I've seen a lot of these units that go way above and beyond that. So while it's much quieter than most of the mini PCs, it does ramp up and down. Like it'll go from 43 to, to close to 48. And it does that frequently. So you, it's not a constant sound, um, which makes it a little more unpleasant when it's going so you do have that, but that's um, really only when you're crunching the entire CPU all at once. So if you're rendering or something, you'll hear that. But when I was playing the games and stuff, it was barely making any noise at all. 15 minutes has passed and it's staying in the 70s, usually the low 70s, but every now and then it'll ramp up to like the mid 70s. All right, let's check this out. I should know the test. I actually hit 59, but I pressed the hold button when it was at 58.6. So it got a little bit louder. I noticed the fans were ramping up a little bit more, but now they've gone back down. So they kind of ramp up and down and up and down. So yeah, you can't hear the fans. It's the nature of these little things. When you're just playing games, the fans are very quiet and it will play a lot of different games. For instance, I'm playing uh, near Tamata, which I haven't actually played yet. I started playing, I just got it and I decided, oh, let's load that up and see how it plays because that's not a brand new game, but it looks really good and it plays on medium. It plays really, really well on medium. And I think it looks really good on medium. Uh, as well so you can play some games from a couple of years ago that are even like triple a games or high quality games console ports even you can play those on this just fine but if you turn it up to high it's just too much so keep it on medium and if it looks good to you then keep playing it so the thing with intel with these i9s and even the core ultra and everything they're very efficient i mean they've got the efficiency cores of course but i mean just overall they're really good for you know like the the amount of power that they draw they can do a lot and they're very good for just 4K editing. Let's try some of that right now while we're talking about it. Let me just hop on over here. Hi, I'll hang out with you and open up Premiere 2024 and just zip around the timeline. I'm running it at four. This is full, you know, 4K stuff. I'm running it at full resolution right here. And uh, there we go. Let me just go ahead and, and do a transition and just see how that runs. We're playing around with 4K footage. I'll do just a reg regular old cross dissolve. Make a long cross dissolve so it's painful. That's pretty good, actually. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. It's Intel does a, a better job than I thought it would when it comes to a lot of different productivity. So, yeah, I do recommend this for productivity, music creation, um, editing, that sort of stuff. When it comes to overall gaming, or if you're just doing stuff and you really need multi-core performance all the time, the Ryzen 7840HS is going to be faster especially for gaming quite a bit faster even with you know the top of the line intel stuff um, in this price range you could spend about the same amount of money or a little bit less and get it you know the ryzen 7 7840hs or the ryzen 9 version of the same one i forget what it is 7940hs maybe those are faster for gaming single core performance the intel is faster it's snappier. When it comes to some types of productivity, if you need low power, if you want to run servers like Proxmox or something, this Intel is great, especially once you you know install the micro code on Linux to tell it, hey, this is one of the big core, little core systems that has the performance cores and the efficiency cores, then it'll be amazing. So there are lots and lots of uses for the Intel systems. For me, I just almost prefer, always prefer to go with the AMDs just because the multi-core is awesome and they're really good at gaming. So that's the thing. It's just hard for me to really recommend this if you want to do gaming. They're really good. I mean, they've gotten a lot better. The XE is actually pretty good. You can play emulators, you can play a lot of stuff, but just not quite as well as the AMD stuff with the integrated 680Ms and 780Ms. But to sum it up, I do love what Geekom is doing with this XT series. They're beautiful, they're extremely well made, and they really are one of the one of the best companies out there making mini PCs. While you're looking at these, if you want to do gaming, I mean, really. Uh, which way's up? There we go. If you want to do gaming, this one is going to be faster for gaming. And it's a very similar build quality. Yeah, this is for gaming. This one, I don't know, maybe multi-core. I mean, this one for snappy single core performance, really efficient. So let me know what you think of this one in the comments. See you there.